the, the absolute goat of the UFC, the best free and free fighter you'll ever know. Uh, Mike Mathefa Blood Diamond has been cut from the UFC. Very unfortunate for all the Blood Diamond fans out there. You know, everybody, everybody was really, you know, thinking this guy was going to make a run after that loss to Charles Radke. We all, we all fought it. Nobody, maybe some of us weren't brave enough to say it, but you know, Blood Diamond was on his way to getting to Leon Edwards and shocking him with a fucking five-second drunken head kick KO. But instead, the UFC, not realizing potential of these fighters, has once again prematurely cut a fighter. In real, real talk, though, <laughs> uh, before people actually think I think I believe these things. So Blood Diamond's been cut. Uh, very unfortunate for him. He went 0-3 and three in the UFC. Uh, yeah, uh, definitely uh, definitely not the greatest run in UFC history. It is shocking that he did last as long as he did, if we're being honest. Like, I... But... I just, I just got to, you know, you got to feel a little bit bad for Blood Diamond. He doesn't seem like a bad guy or anything. Uh, but uh, looking, looking at Blood Diamond's Instagram, it seems like he's going to keep fighting. So maybe we'll see him pop up in Eternal or Hex or Shurinkin. Or maybe he'll go back to kickboxing, fight King of the Ring or something. But I don't know. Uh, I think... <laughs> I think it's time that a uh, blood diamond pays his due in the regional scene. You know, he didn't, for being honest, he didn't really beat the greatest guys in the regional scene. I, I like arguably the best guy he, he has a win over is Dim Skillies and arguably Dim Skillies beat him in that fight. Like it was very competitive. So honestly, I wouldn't, you know, I wouldn't mind seeing, you know, blood diamond, go in there, if he's going to stay at welterweight, maybe you can put him in there with like Caleb Ridehow, the winner of Ridehow versus Bates, or maybe, you know, I don't know, Blood Diamond could probably make, make lightweight, why don't we just thrust him into a fucking title fight against Quillen Salki, which is for shits and geeks or something, let's build up some prospects with a Blood Diamond, you know, obviously people aren't thinking Blood Diamond's like the greatest fighter in the world, but he does have former UFC fighter Blood Diamond attached to his name. So he's going to be a wanted man on the regional scene. Anyone is going to want to use him to big up their name now. Like he's going to be, he's going to have a target on his head now on the, on the Australian and New Zealand regional scene. Like people don't, people underestimate how big it is getting a win over a former UFC fighter. It doesn't matter how bad they are. As if you get a win over someone who was in the UFC, that that really does uh, shoot up your name. You know, especially it'll put you on the UFC radar more. Like I know Josh Togo has been calling out Blood Diamond, fucking endlessly, endlessly, endlessly trying to get that fight against Blood Diamond. Like he's he's a man possessed trying to get that fight against Blood Diamond. Like let me just go, let me just go on to Josh Togo. Uh, for those who don't know, Josh Togo, Australian top team fighter. He fights in UAE Warriors sometimes as well. He was the Eternal Champion. Uh, he's the Hex Champion as well. Uh, let me let me find it. Let me put this left hand on Blood Diamond's chin at UFC Sydney in September. Uh, what else? I think there was another one. <laughs> I'm going to cop a lot of criticisms for this one. Correct me if I'm stepping out of line. This isn't a call out. I'm doing this with the utmost regret. I'm throwing this out there and observing if that makes a lot of sense from a fight analyst view. Blood Diamond is free in two UFC 0 and 2, and I'm imagining he's looking to get a spot on the UFC Sydney card. I'm 12 and 4, and I'm undefeated as a welterweight in my career 6 and 0. I'm not trying to jump the gun of the other welterweights above me in the odds rankings as they deserve a shot too. This fight makes a lot of sense. Stylistically, this is a perfect matchup. We're both. Off unorthodox strikers who like to keep the fight on the feet, a perfect fight for both of us. We haven't had the best of luck in our previous fights, but he's basically looking to stay in the roster. I'm looking for a way in. He also, he, I think he, this, this fight was one of the 
I'm still coming for you too, Blood Diamond. Whether you've been cut or not, I don't give a fuck. Pick a promotion. I'm there. Like, he just endlessly, all of his Instagram posts for a while were all just fucking calling out Blood Diamond. Uh, is there another one? Then there was also this video that I have to bring up. People have probably seen this. I put it, it was on my shorts. Not, not the shorts I wear, my YouTube shorts. Where is it? Where's Josh Togo at? Any second now. Any second. Oh, there we go. Oh. Finished watching Blood Diamond's fight. And this was after the Charlie Radke fight, just for an FYI. In my honest opinion, the guy fucking sucks. His fucking striking sucks. His takedown defense sucks. His cage defense sucks. Everything about him is so shit. And they let cunts like that in the fucking UFC because he was 3 0 in the regional circuit. At least a few more fights first. You know, build yourself up and then get signed. But. Look, we all know why he got signed. It's a no-brainer. But now he's on three in the fucking UFC. And he's definitely going to get cut, bro. I'll fight that fucking cunt on any fucking promotion in the regional circuit. Just to show you how fucking she is. That's a fucking sped. So he wants that fight. He wants to fight him at welterweight. Uh, Blood Diamond, you know, he's got a name now. He's going to keep fighting. Which, you know, it's smart. If you're a former UFC fighter on the regional scene, that holds a lot of weight. You can, you can, you know, you don't have to be like a fucking undefeated, you know, maybe lost like your last two fights and then you got cut. Like, you don't have to have a great record in the UFC. Just fighting in the UFC once, just forever you'll be known as a former UFC fighter. You know, like that, that having that title is actually massive for you on the regional scene. Like it, it's bigger than people realize, especially on the Australian, New Zealand regional scene where, you know, there isn't a lot of former UFC fighters. You know, a lot of them, they go to the UFC and then that's after that, they call it quits for their career. If you come fight on the regional scene after that, you can, you can get like some big fights and, you know, people, everyone's going to agree to fight you on the regional scene. You know, they're going to want that title, you know, former UFC fighter on their resume, but you know, Josh Togo wants it. I don't see why not. I feel like it makes a lot of sense. He's calling for the fight. He's a striker, you know. We literally seen Blood Diamond get mauled by grapplers. I mean, he did get beat up on the feet. But, like, you know, they gave him grappler after grappler. Maybe Blood Diamond's striking is actually is really good when he's not having to worry about a takedown threat. Maybe. You never know. But, you know, it'd be interesting to see what happens for Blood Diamond on his band? He's back on the regional scene. Maybe Blood Diamond goes on a run, you know, maybe he makes his way back into the UFC. I don't think that will happen personally. I think there's a lot of guys on the regional scene better than Blood Diamond, but, you know, he's he's well within his rights to prove me wrong. I'll, I'll happily be proven wrong, but I guess we'll see what happens for Blood Diamond now he's out of the UFC. Hopefully he doesn't take too much time off. You know, he's not a spring chicken by any means. I mean, he looks older than... How old is he? He's like 35. Like he looks older than he apparently is. Let's see. Does he have a Wikipedia page? Mike Mefefa. No, he does not have a Wikipedia page. Makes sense. Uh, how old is this bloke? I think he's 35 though. They'll have his age on Tapology. Yeah, 35 years old. Yeah. Uh, he's 35. He looks older. But, you know, if he's going to make anything of his career, he really does have to, like, it's now or never for this bloke. Like, generally, it is now or never. So if he wants to, he needs to get on, get on with it, in my opinion. But, yeah, that's all I've got to say about that. You know, I wish the best for Blood Diamond. You know, he doesn't seem like a bad guy by any means. He's not the greatest fighter, in my opinion, but he does seem like a, you know, he seems like a genuine guy. He actually seems really nice. I've heard, I've heard a lot of good stories about people I know that know Blood Diamond. Like, he apparently is actually a very nice guy, but yeah. His style, very interesting style. Maybe it's going to work out for him on the regional scene. You know, his, his takedown defense was looking better and better every fight. So maybe he, on the regional scene, he's not going to get taken down, but. A lot of good strikes on the regional scene too. So it'll be interesting to see what's next for uh, old Blood Diamond, the GOAT, the absolute GOAT of MMA. But yeah, that's all I've got to talk about there. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video.